Our gospel reading today on Monday, Thursday, is where the name comes from, actually. Monday, Thursday comes from the Latin mandatum, mandate, commandment, novum, new. This is the new commandment. And it's said after Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. This is from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his dear companions, he continued to love them right to the end. It was supper time. The devil by now had Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, firmly in his grip, all set for the betrayal. And Jesus knew that the Father had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God and was on his way back to God. So he got up from the supper table, set aside his robe, and put on an apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them with the apron. And when he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? Jesus answered, You don't understand now what I'm doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. But Peter persisted. You are not going to wash my feet ever. And Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you can't be part of what I'm doing. Master, said Peter, well then not only my feet, wash my hands, wash my head. And Jesus said, if you've had a bath in the morning, you only need wash your feet, and you're clean from head to toe. My concern, you understand, is holiness, not hygiene. So now you're clean, but not every one of you. He knew who was betraying him. And that's why he said, not every one of you. After he had finished washing their feet, he took his robe, put it back on, and went back to his place at the table. And then Jesus said, do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, washed your feet, you now must wash each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, Act like it and live a blessed life. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is seen for who he is, and God seen for who God is in the Son. The moment God is seen in him, God's glory will be on display, and in glorifying him, he himself is glorified. Glory all around. Children, I am with you for only a short time longer. You are going to look high and low for me, but just as I told the crowds, I'm telling you, where I go, you are not able to come. Let me give you a new command. Love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples. When they see the love you have, for each other. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. No one stands alone, we stand side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle. Stay.
The great altar in the temple in Jerusalem on that day was stained with the blood of countless lambs. It was not a pretty sight. It was not meant to be. And in just hours, it would cost the blood of a lamb eternally more precious. They had gathered in the upper room that evening to celebrate the Passover. What a week it had been. Just on the beginning of the week, on Sunday, they had marched in as almost a sense of conquerors. The king riding on his donkey. The crowds amassing to walk alongside of Jesus. How exciting must that have been, one of his closest companions. But that cheering crowd had slowly morphed into a threatening mob. And now they're gathered upstairs, ready to celebrate the Passover meal, and the temper and tone of Jesus was changing and their angst was growing. Even the Passover meal would be changed as Jesus gets up, removes his outer cloak, puts on an apron, kneels at the feet of each of the disciples, and washes their feet. That is a most humbling experience. In our tradition, we have two sacraments. In the Catholic, there are seven, certainly. For us, it's communion and baptism. But in southern Indiana, where I began ministry, there is an expression of the Baptist church that has three, three sacraments, communion, baptism, and the washing of feet. Because... Often, the definition of a sacrament is something that Jesus did and commanded us to do. And we see here in the Gospel, Jesus washes the feet and then says, I am the Master, do as I do. And so, they actually call themselves, refer to themselves, and are referred to in the communities as the Dirty Foot Baptists. But if you've ever had the privilege and the honor and the humble, powerful experience of either washing a person's feet or having your feet washed. It is a powerful, moving, and holy experience. Jesus comes, gathers them, washes each of their feet, each of their feet, and then gathers them back at table to do some more teaching. How powerful to note that Judas is amongst the disciples at the foot washing. It is not until after that event that Judas leaves. My guess is that in the days, weeks, and years to come, that would never leave the apostles' minds that Judas's feet were washed by Jesus, just as theirs were. So, this new mandate this new commandment that, that Jesus gives, you notice, is an in-house command. Earlier in the Gospels, we have Jesus asked the question by uh, a theologian, a, a 
teacher of the law says what is the greatest commandment he doesn't ask that because he doesn't know he wants to make sure this rabbi knows his stuff what is the greatest commandment all jews know that it's the shema deuteronomy 6 4 hear o israel the lord our god is one and you shall love the lord your god with all your heart your mind your soul and your strength jesus says that and then quickly goes to leviticus 19 18 and says there's a second like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself right that story well here amongst his disciples his closest friends he looks them in the eye and says i have a new commandment for you love one another and wouldn't it be nice if jesus had just stopped there then we could have a group hug and a warm fuzzy feeling but he doesn't love one another just as i have loved you you love one another that's a pretty high bar jesus says a new commandment i give you love one another this is an in-house commandment let the example of your love for each other be the mark the witness of who you are in my name let that be the mark of those who follow jesus josephus the jewish historian in the first century wrote in his histories look how they love one another that wasn't uh, something he said he was actually quoting what he heard on the street look how they love one another may that be the mark of the church of jesus the christ may we be a witness to the world how we love one another in support in nurture in community in holiness in care look how they love one another this monday thursday as we move from this poignant sacred holy time through tomorrow good friday as we go from the upper room and we move to golgotha the place of the skull the hill on which jesus is crucified and especially as we go forward with the glorified christ as we go forward with the risen savior may our lives be an expression of this new commandment jesus's commandment may we this day and each day love one another as we seek to love in the way that christ loves god's peace god's presence and god's blessing this day and each day Yes, yes.
Let's join together in the sacrament of Holy Communion, the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. By your appointment, the seasons come and go. You bring forth bread from the earth, create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image and made us stewards of your world. Earth has yielded its treasure, and from your hand we have received blessing on blessing. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus the Christ. Though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor. When hungry and tempted, he refused to make bread for himself, that he might be the bread of life for others. When the multitudes were hungry, he fed them. He broke bread with the outcasts, but drove the greedy from the temple. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you give birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in memory of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As you share amongst yourselves in your households, the words are as you offer the bread, the body of Christ broken for you. And then as you offer the chalice, the blood of Christ shed for you. Jodel, the body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Jesus, who is the Christ, shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And his blood shed for you. Alleluia. I invite us to a time of prayer. Let us be in an attitude of prayer as we lift our hearts to God. God of judgment and mercy, whose ways are not our ways, we seek your protection and a double measure of courage. 
that we may dare to stand against principalities and powers that deny the humanity of our sisters and brothers, to the end that all people may live in a loving environment in which needs are met and all of us reach out in caring ways to one another. Loving God, we would offer nothing less than our best, the first fruits of our labors, a generous portion of all we have received from your hand. We here express our thanks for the salvation you have extended to us. You are our help and our deliverer. We rejoice in the opportunity to serve in Christ's name. Fed at Christ's table, we have been strengthened. We go with Christ to face life's tough realities. As disciples, God invites us to be and do much for the cause of the commonwealth of Christ. We cannot avoid the challenge of the cross. Rejoice and be glad, people of God. Death does not have the last word. What is good and right and true prevails. We praise you for your power and your grace, God. Amen.